Today I'm out in the Bay Area looking at Rivian's latest affordable extended range electric vehicle. In a manner of speaking. What I'm really here for is also the startup within the startup focused not on vehicle manufacturing but micromobility solutions. And today is the launch of their flagship product, the TMB Class 3 electric bicycle. It's not something we've covered a lot of here on the channel, the micromobility side of things, but this one is particularly fascinating, not just because of the two wheel options, but hopefully the four wheel variants that we'll see more on the road or on the bike path. So this is it, moments ago also pulled off the covers for their first ever product, the TMB, and it'll be here before you know it. Early 2026 is where we're gonna get these launch editions. Let me tell you some of the things this one does that the other later models probably won't. It's based off of the performance model, so there are gonna be a performance and a non-performance, although launch edition will of course come first. And with that, you get 100 miles of riding range. But of course, you can go ahead and recharge your vehicle just by pedaling. But what's different on this e-bike is that when you're pedaling, none of what you're doing is actually getting directly translated to those rear wheels. All of it is done through a generator. Think of it like an extended range system, which is why I referenced it earlier, where you're powering the generator, generator goes to the battery, battery to the wheel, and that's how you get your power. That is, of course, if you're pedaling, and the way you do that is gonna be a little bit different because there's a lot of software baked into this machine. And that's one of the things I think will make also so successful, not that they have the software, but the way they control the software and hopefully continue to update it. Let's take a look at your power source. And one thing I love about this launch edition is that it comes with this translucent panel here. It transports me right back to the 90s. But what it shows you here is that your pedals are in no way connected to the actual drive unit for that rear wheel. And in this case, it is going to be a single gear as you find in most e-bikes out there. But you are essentially powering the generator that goes through the battery and then directly to that motor. But it's not just a one-to-one. -one. There's a lot of software happening here. And if you want to ride this like a regular bicycle, either you're essentially dead on battery or you just want what you're putting out to be the speed you're going, you would go ahead and set your assist level down to one. You do that over here on this lever. Now, if shift level one basically means one-to-one. -one, and on the performance versions of this, you'll be able to go up to level 10, which means essentially 10 times the output of what you're putting forward. Obviously, it's going to cut into things like your riding range, but they tell me that a high-level cyclist can go ahead and do that, and you will certainly get that power output. The limiting factor is, of course, going to be the top speed, in this case set to 28 miles an hour, and at that point, you'll start to go ahead and lose some of that assist. If you don't get the launch edition or the performance model, you'll go from 10 times down to 5 times. That'll be in the more standard model that'll be out later this year and obviously at a lower price point. But you'll also get on this particular model the larger battery. So that larger battery is the reason we can do 100 miles. But if you get the smaller battery, it should be closer to 50 or 60. Every model will be a full suspension bike, so shocks up front and in the rear, although this is hardly going to be your full downhill mountain bike, mostly designed for things like comfort. On the top end models, everything is going to be air. On the lower end, you're gonna swap out some suspension components for coils rather than air, which means this is gonna be a little bit more comfortable, but that is to be expected with the higher price point. I'm here at the brakes because one unique component of this layout is that you can get regenerative capacity, where in a lot of e-bikes, that's just simply not possible. A little bit of a pull is gonna initiate that regen capacity, but they do have sensors here to make sure that these wheels aren't slipping, that you're not losing traction, and they're actually using an ABS sensor to do that. That tells you how much they're connected with Rivian because there's a little bit more automotive design here than you find in most other modes of transport. At the moment, it sounds like if you're throttling down a hill and you wanna absolutely maximize your regen, there's not gonna be a best way to do that, but that's more of an interesting use case that I'm curious about, not one I would expect this to have right out the gate. And because Rivian controls the entire software stack here, it is something they could do in the future as long as the hardware on board is already capable of it. Let's talk a little bit about the interface and what you would see as the rider. The first thing that's gonna stand out is gonna be this display, which they call the portal display, which is going to be used to do, well, just about everything on this bike. And of course, you are gonna have phone connectivity, which is what you would expect from a very tech-focused company. There are gonna be different modes like walk, park, or ride, and you can go ahead and shift this left and right to engage those. Obviously, you'll be able to swipe backwards and forwards, connect your phone, play your music, get your turn-by-turn -turn navigation in a way that also says it's gonna be a little bit better than you can find on Google Cycle right now. And then, of course, one of the most important components is going to be how many miles you actually have left. That's nice, big, and easy to see. When it comes to recharging your bike, obviously pedaling is one way to do it while you're out there riding, 
But if you lift this up here, it's gonna expose your USB-C port. That is going to be the way you charge your bike. USB-C, not a proprietary connection. And this will take up to 240 watts of USB-C capability. Now on that larger 100 mile battery, which is gonna be about 800, 850 watts is what I was told earlier, that'll charge zero to 80% in about 30 odd minutes. And of course this battery is removable. So if you don't wanna leave it as is and plug in, say when you're at home, say you're at the office and you're low on charge, go ahead and pull it out, carry it up there with you, plug it into whatever USB-C port you have and it will be charging up while you're at work. Also, Zephyr's efforts here are a little bit unique because none of what they're doing is pulling components off the shelf and putting them into their own system. They're building the system from the ground up. And once you've got things like pedal mapping figured out in software, well, you have a platform you can then build off of, and that's exactly what we have here. The TMB might be the one most consumers are looking at. I think the coolest thing here is probably this TMQ. Further down the line and more for fleet usage, but I see this one being, well, great for the consumer who doesn't want to drive around everywhere, who maybe has a vehicle but prefers hopping to the store and something, you know, a little bit more leisurely. And this, go ahead and swap out these seats that are currently here for something like a basket, some cargo space, is perfect for that use case. Obviously four wheels means it's also gonna be a little bit more stable. So for some folks who might have difficulty riding around on a two wheel bike and then feel limited in where they can go or aren't getting exercise maybe they would like to, this is going to be a great option. So I would love to see this come to market as soon as humanly possible. It's using the same sort of drive software, it's using the same side of motors and the battery outputs, although obviously we could probably add batteries when we have a larger frame. But as compelling as this is to me conceptually, I think fewer people are gonna be interested and that means that making this on its own wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, at least not financially. So what else can you do with this? And the answer to that question is probably go a little bit bigger. And that's exactly what they've done here. This is a very similar frame as we saw over there, but also scaled up and enclosed, which means not only are the passengers or riders a little bit more comfortable, but so too is the cargo they may be carrying. And if this looks strangely like the latest Amazon vehicle you saw down the road with those funny little headlights, well, that's because it's a very similar idea. Rivian partnered with Amazon and they've done so again. You'll see that this one can be branded with a Prime logo on the side and it just looks like a scaled down version of their ADV delivery van. And that's not only been a huge boom for Rivian, I think it's gonna be great for also, also. Because having a corporate partner like that means that R&D and research and the focus group and probably the first batch of orders helps a lot when it comes to things like cash flow. And any startup needs to have that on board. I would love to see these more than I would see the larger vans. And if we can go ahead and scale some of that down, not only should traffic get a little bit easier, but if I was a delivery driver, I think I'd rather be a delivery rider than driver in this case. And I'd be completely remiss if I didn't show you at least some of the ways that you can make this bike completely your own, not just on the weekends, but also for the weekdays and just about everything in between. I've stopped here because this might be my favorite, but let me tell you why. Because this looks like a bike that you're meant to go around the city. That's what a lot of e-bikes do. There are of course some off-road versions, but very few that can do both in a real way. Of course, this isn't gonna have an enormous suspension, but go ahead and swap on some knobbier tires and you've probably got all the traction that you need. But if you need cargo capability, you've got it here. These racks are going to be accessories, but the big thing that's changed here is actually the utility layout for this post. Now, if you wanna swap out the seat, it's different than a regular seat, but to your benefit, I think, if you want versatility. That's the best thing about a modular design. You tell the bike that you are gonna swap out this component, it will release it, take that off, and put a new one on. You can do a standard seat, a utility layout like we have here with the rack attached, or you can go ahead and put on a bench if you wanna get around, but you don't wanna be bike riding, maybe more cruising, looking for a little bit more comfortable seating arrangement. That's gonna be the biggest swap out and the biggest change to the vehicle, but of course there are gonna be a ton of accessories. In this case, we've got a water bottle holder and it looks like a phone holder and all the racks you can imagine. It sounds like there's about a 400 pound weight capacity on this, but it seems like you can do just about everything from taking all of your junk out for a weekend of camping, to taking your kid to and from school with a seat attachment, to loading up with flowers to go to the market or to yoga with different utility racks. Or if you're just trying to get to and from the office, the standard bike and the solo seat, Perfect. All right, time to get this on the road and we get one quick lap, but the thing here is all about assist. This is the launch edition, so it's gonna get up to 10 times assist of what I put through it. And you can go ahead and adjust that either in an automatic way, which is just a general level, or a manual way, which is gonna be much more controlled. So I can go ahead and get myself more power, less power. But really the whole beauty of an e-bike is more power, at least I think so. 
And right now I'm pedaling, but if I wanted to basically just throttle out and not have to worry about pedaling at all, as long as I've got battery charge to do it, that shouldn't be an issue. We only get one lap, so I'm not gonna try and set too many records at this point, but trust me, of all the things that we can go ahead and test at home, this is one I would certainly like to. But I'll be honest, I might be more interested in one of those cargo versions. The step through made this really easy to get into. The riding position is nice and comfortable. Obviously, there's a lot of boost here. I'd love to do a race sometime, but they'd have to send us a couple and maybe Alex and I could go ahead and find a place to do that. But overall, if you're looking for a way to make your commute more enjoyable, but you still want to do a little bit of exercise, this is probably going to be just about that perfect balance. For me, this bike borders right on the line of evolutionary and revolutionary. Evolution means small improvements. Revolutionary is a completely different direction, but that doesn't always mean for the best. I think, again, right there, they found a sweet spot because they know what folks are looking for in an e-bike. There's a lot of information out there and e-bikes are ever more popular. I think one of the best things going for also is going to be obviously their connection to Rivian, and that's a company that brands trust and consumers trust. So when you're looking at something like a cargo bike, you want to get it from a brand that has done this sort of thing before, or at least knows how to deal with larger fleet customers. And of course, they have their experience with Amazon. And if you're a consumer, well, there's a lot of bikes out there that have names you have never heard of with reviews all over the place from one to five stars. And again, knowing what you're getting is an important piece of that puzzle, especially when you expect the company to not go under tomorrow, which unfortunately happens a lot in the micromobility world anyway. I also have to say the starting price on this, the launch edition and the performance models being about $4,500 is probably just about the sweet spot. That is on the more expensive side for an e-bike, but certainly not the most expensive. And what you can do with this and the multiple configurations that are available make this incredibly versatile in a way that you don't get in a lot of other models. Modularity does come with some compromise, but in a lot of cases when it makes it to market, the advantages seem to outweigh the disadvantages. And I have to admit, I am someone who loves the word modularity. Again, as long as it's implemented in a good way. If you're like me and you like what's going on here, but you wouldn't want to pay $4,500, the standard model with the smaller battery and a little bit lower output, that'll be available at under $4,000. But at the moment, that's all the info we have. So I guess we'll just have to wait until later. Let me know down in the comments, is there any world where you swap out your daily driver for something like an e-bike, or is it something you could go ahead and use out on the weekends? I live a little bit rural for everyday use, but certainly for a longer ride or I want to enjoy the area where I live, this would be a great option. And if also wants to send me one, I'm certainly willing to give it a longer review. Thanks so much for watching. There's a ton that happened here at this event. So if I missed something, let me know down in the comments below, ask your questions. We'll go ahead and try and get them answered. Until next time, drive safe, ride safe, and we'll see you down the road.